After Castle Rising, we made our way to Castle Acre Priory. The, su the substantial remains of Castle Acre Priory form the finest example left of the Cluniac Order's highly decorated stonework in England. The numbers of monks here fluctuated over the years, partly as a result of finances. The community was seriously in debt in the 1290s as a result of disease in the sheep flock, which was the main earner for them, and partly as a result of the Black Death of 1348-49. But initially, it housed 36. As well as the monks who spent most of their day performing the set rituals and prayers of the order, lay brothers would have worked in the domestic buildings. Politics, too, affected the priory, with either expensive visits from royalty, Edward I and his queen Eleanor spent several weeks as guests of the prior in January of 1296, or during the Hundred Years' War with France, substantial fines and persecutions by both Edward II and Edward III, who viewed the Cluniac order in England as potential allies of the French. The final active chapter of the Priory's history came with the suppression of the monasteries under Henry VIII. In 1537, the King's secretary, Thomas Cromwell, and Thomas Howard, the Duke of Norfolk, persuaded the King to give the Priory at Lewis to Cromwell and Castle Acre to Norfolk. The supporting estates of the priories were a lucrative acquisition, and like all English monasteries, the remaining monks were pensioned off. The land eventually came into the hands of Sir Edward Coke, whose descendants, the Earls of Leicester, still own the site, along with Castle Acre Castle itself. From here we were on to our final inn, Hunter's Hall. This place is spectacular. It is a farm where the many of the um, outbuildings have been converted into rooms. It's just surrounded by beautiful countryside. 